So this is the beautiful view that I have right now. And I am currently sitting on a porch at our house in the mountains. And I am making you a video. So Mr. and Mrs. A are really enjoying our time here with our kids and our grandkids. And I wanted to get this second video of your um, chapter six review for your test on Monday, because I won't be there for your test, but you, if you listen to the videos and you work through them, should be thoroughly reviewed for the, um, the test. So you will find online the, these videos and also the links to both PowerPoints on uh, Teams so that you can drum up the PowerPoint and the videos and review away. So it's there. Hopefully you will use it. Okay, so hopefully you already watched the video that had one through nine. And this is 10 through 20 of the practice test 6A. So here is number 10. I'm going to get a drawing tool and we'll use green. What is the area of a triangle with vertices at negative one, negative one, three, negative one, and two, two? Well, it's always helpful. Oh, well, that's not a very straight line. But it's helpful to graph. So negative one, negative one would be one step to the left and one step down. And then three, negative one would be one, two, three steps to the right and one step down. Now notice that both of these points are one step down and from negative one to three is four steps across, okay? And then two, two is the other point. So one, two, up two is the third point of our triangle. And we're to find the area of this triangle and the area of a triangle. So I'll put area with a little T there. Area of a triangle is one half the length of the base times the height. So how high is this triangle? So remember this point here is two comma two. Okay, so it is two steps above, but then this baseline is one step below because that was negative one and negative one. So two above and one below means that the whole height is three units. Okay, so we're going to grab an eraser here. I'm going to erase base and I'm going to erase height and I'm going to put in base of four and height of three. Okay, so that's the area. One half of four is two and two times three is six. Now this is area, so it is in square units. So six square units would be our area. We do not just write six because it is area, it should be in square units. Number 11, write 40% as a decimal number and a reduced fraction. So 40% to write 40% as a decimal, we're going to remember that this is um, out of 100. So 40 out of 100 is a fractional value, which we know when we divide by 100, we just move the decimal two places over. So 40% is taking the decimal that is here and moving it two places to the left to get rid of the percent sign. So 0.4 would be a decimal number and 
40 over 100th is a fraction, but not reduced. So we cross out the zeros. Now, reduced is a term that's not used much anymore. Most books will now use simplified. Okay, so we're not reducing anything because we're not changing the value to make it smaller. We're just simplifying the fraction. It means the same thing as 40 over 10, but we can write it, divide by 2 on the top, and we get 2. Divide by 2 on the bottom, and we get 5. So the simplified fraction is 2 fifths. So the answer to this question is 0.4 for the decimal and 2 fifths for the fraction. Number 12, <clears throat> convert 5 sixths to a decimal with a bar over the repetence. So to convert a fraction to a decimal, we do a simple division, 5 divided by 6. Now, since 5, since 6 does not go into 5, we're going to go ahead and put a decimal and a 0, and we can extend as many zeros as we want, and our decimal will go right above. Okay, so 6 into 50 is going to go 8 times because 8 times 6 is 48, and we subtract and get 2, but we want to keep on dividing. So we'll bring down another 0, and 6 into 20 is going to go 3 times, because 6 times 3 is 18. And guess what? We have another 2, which was what we had before. So we don't have to keep on doing this. We know that we had a 2 here. It gave us a 3. We have another 2. This is going to continue forever, isn't it? So 0.833 repeating. So we're going to write that as 0.83 with the bar over. This 3 is called the repetend because it is the portion that continues on and on. Number 13. Earth's average distance from the sun is about 93 million miles. Express that number in scientific notation. So remember, the decimal's got to come here from where it is right now, which is at the end of the number. So we're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the left to get 9.3. And since we moved 7 to the left, that is a division by 10 to the 7th. So we must compensate by multiplying by 10 to the 7th. So in other words, we divided by 10 to the 7th to get the decimal where we wanted it. And so to undo that, we have to multiply by 10 to the 7th because we always want our scientific notation to exactly represent the number we started out with. Number 14, triangle ABC is transformed to A prime, B prime, C prime by a what? Okay, so what is happening here? Translation, rotation, reflection, dilation. Okay, so we're only allowed to choose one. So we're going to say that this one is a reflection and that right here looks like that would be about a line of reflection, right? Okay, so remember dilation makes it greater or smaller in size, so that's not it. Rotation is when it spins around, and that's not what happened. Translation is when it just moves to a different place. Okay, that's not what's happening because it's not the same as it moves, but it is a reflection, and when there's a reflection, there is a line of reflection, and it would be right in between the two. So basically, if this were a piece of paper, you could fold it right there on that line of reflection, and this would fold right over to the other image. 
All right, finding the missing exponent. This is number 15. Now remember, when we multiply like bases, we add the exponents together. So 10 to the ninth power would be the answer. Okay, number 16, solve by inspection. Okay, so T plus two. Now I'm just going to multiply both sides by three. Remember, I can multiply both sides by three, divide both sides by any same number. Multiply both sides by three, and when I do that to this side, the three, so I'm gonna multiply by three on this side. I'm gonna multiply by three on this side. And won't this three cancel this three to give us t plus two equals 12. So now if I subtract 2 and I subtract 2, I'm going to get t, this cancels, equals 10. That is my answer. Now to check it, I'm going to go back up here, get rid of that, and go back to the original equation, and I'm going to plug in the 10 right here. 10 plus 2 is 12 divided by 3 is 4. And it checks. Check. All right, so let's go to number 17. We have 1 half plus 1 third times 1 fourth. Now remember that times in order of operations goes before plus. It is like the higher ranking officer in the military. We must salute it first. We must take care of it. So one times one is one, and three times four is 12. So now we're going to bring this one half plus 12. Okay, now one half and 12 can't add until I get a common denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this one by six on the top and six on the bottom, and I'm gonna get six twelfths plus one twelfth is seven twelfths. Very important to use your order of operations on everything. So the answer is seven twelfths on number 17, number 18, has 1.2 plus 0.36 divided by 0.06. So when I'm doing order of operations on something that looks like a fraction like this, I'm going to treat the numerator first and then I'll divide by the denominator. So even though you don't see it here, we're going to treat this like it is a operation all by itself, like simplify the numerator, then simplify the denominator, and then divide. So we're going to say 1.2. Remember when we're adding our decimals, we must line up the decimals. Okay, so I'm just to make it easier, I'm going to add a zero so I have enough decimals. Zero plus six is six. Two plus three is five. Decimal one. So this is going to be one 0.56 divided by 0 0.06. So let's do that with long division. 1.56 divided by 0 0.06. Okay, now remember when my divisor has decimals, I must clear those decimals. So now I'm doing 6 into 156, and my new decimal will be right here at the end. And 6 goes into 15 zero times. Okay, so 6 goes into 15, excuse me, not zero times, 2. 2 times 6 is 12. 15 minus 12 is 3. Bring down my 6. 6 goes into 36. Um, six times, and I have no remainder. I do not need to extend this at all. 26 
is my final answer. Number 10, I'm 19, excuse me. We have five to the zero is one plus four minus three. So we're just gonna put a one above there so we don't have to copy this again. Copying is pretty tedious with this. So now I have to look and say, okay, what has to happen first? This multiplication is the highest um, priority, isn't it? So we're gonna say three times two, but it's a negative three times two. We'll say this is a negative six plus one. A four is on the other side, and then plus five to the zero is one. So now everything is plus or minus. I'm gonna go left to right. One plus four is five. Five take away six is negative one, plus one is zero. And lastly, we have multiplication x cubed times x to the fourth is x to the seventh divided by x to the fifth. When we divide, we subtract the exponents and we get x squared and we are done. So I hope you enjoyed your little video. I hope you will take the time to play these things through several times until you completely understand all the problems. And remember that the blank practice sheet that I gave you that was two sides that was your pretest is five points extra credit on your test simply by going through, watching the videos, and putting it down on paper. You should all have 100% of this because I did it for you in two videos. So watch the videos. Bye. I will see you all on Wednesday. Don't forget that on Wednesday, your notebooks are due and your substitute on Monday is going to hand out to you the review one. Make sure you do review one because it is due Wednesday. And this is Mrs. A and may God bless your day.